Hello, my name is Richard Giroux. You are watching Art Visions, the television series for creative visions and respect for humanity. Since 97, we have developed a variety of programs that we really run here at Empower. Income tax assistance during this time of the year in the spring, Christmas assistance, summer programs, things like that. But our, our main work, our primary projects are literacy, health care, and economic assistance. Empower runs Empower Literacy, which is the largest adult literacy program in Alabama. We are currently working with over 200 adults in our community, helping them to become independent readers. That's individuals between 17 and up into the 90s who did not finish school or did not uh, learn well in school or, or had to drop out or whatever that don't have independent reading skills. That means they cannot read at a fifth grade level. They cannot read a job application, a health care form, or a, a label on a prescription bottle. And Empower Literacy wants to work with those individuals to help them become independent readers and productive members of society. Some have come to us wanting to help get a GED or to get a better job, to help their children with homework, and some have, came, have come just wanting to better themselves saying, don't let me die illiterate. We're serving 165 residents here in our community and doing new projects at St. Clair Prison and Tutwater Prison, helping uh, those in our community receive the gift of literacy. Our motto is if you can read, you can teach someone to read. So M literacy is a huge project with Empower Ministries. Another huge project that we're engaged in is the Empower Clinic. Empower operates the only free medical clinic in the central Alabama area. Using volunteer doctors and nurses, pharmacists, and other medical professionals, Empower has treated more than 5,000 patients since opening the clinic in the year 2000. We're open two nights a week, seeing those without insurance, underinsured, and those in shelters around the community. And doctors and nurses come to us from churches, from hospitals, from doctors' offices, from clinics, all over the county to provide good, free health care to those most in need. Our patients have nowhere else to turn. Uh, they are often shut out of Cooper Green or the health department, don't have access to private hospitals, and without Empower, they really have nowhere else to go. In fact, we often hear, you're the only ones who will help me. This year, we wanted to do something new in the community, and after much deliberation, we created an event called Sing and Shout. Sing and Shout will be a visual and oral retelling of who and what Empower is. Sing and Shout will be Sunday, March 5th, at the Alice Stevens Center. And Empower has invited eight different choirs throughout the community to perform at the Alice Stevens Center, uh, independently and then jointly in one mass choir. Cathedral Church of the Advent, Eastside Baptist Church, Vestavia Hills Baptist, Vestavia Hills Methodist, Independent Presbyterian, New Hope Baptist Church, and Sixth Avenue Baptist Church will be joining us to tell the Empower story.
local arts agencies, we fund dance companies, uh, we fund uh, uh, museums. We also try to concentrate a great deal of our support on, on education and providing artistic experiences uh, to young people. Uh, we feel like um, our students and our young folks are the audiences of, of tomorrow and so uh, uh, exposure to the arts at an early age is, is very critical. The arts are a, a part of, of teaching, the arts are, are part of, of learning. think about things you say because once you've spoken a word it can't be took back. I love my family and I and uh, the tribe as a whole is a big family, extended family. But I also love all the nations and I feel like that if we tried hard we could all be more connected and more uh, caring for one another. If you show respect and honor to other people, you'll receive respect and honor. That was the largest group of people, the largest city, if you will, in North America. Uh, my name is Little Hawk. I'm from Oklahoma, a little small town in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Um, I come down to the Native American festivals in Alabama to go ahead and relive the history that was here and spread it out to people so that way what we learned on the John Wayne movies isn't real. What, we're, what I'm doing here today is just portraying the Mississippians that had lived in this area in which Creeks and Choctaws have originated from around in this area. They are mighty few that can speak fluently. I'm I'm born I don't hold on to any a bestial guy that's all about to hold on to any is to go on a book as to do it. Go on to do it, man. To get up to us, see. These are lances, sometimes called the buffalo lance. We use flint, we use obsidian. Obsidian is a natural volcanic glass. It can be made 10 times sharper than surgical steel. The buffalo lance is what the warriors would do is they would, they would run with the herds of buffalo and, and they would use the lance to, to kill the buffaloes. Now this one is gonna be a, a flint point. We use elk to decorate it. This would be a buffalo lance. And, and we would take the buffalo lance because it's such a heavy, wide point, it would, it would uh, crease the buffalo. And other important individuals from our community. Hello everyone, I'm Angela Hall, assistant to the executive director at the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Many of you may remember the institute opened back in November of 1992 
First, with a dedication to the people of Birmingham, the many foot soldiers who helped to tear down segregation in Birmingham, Alabama, and one of the many people that we honored was Reverend Fred L. Shuttlesworth. His statue graces the main entrance to the Institute. This photograph is one that shows uh, Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, Dr. Martin Luther King, and Reverend Ralph Abernathy on one of those Easter weekends uh, during the civil rights struggle here in Birmingham. These photographs show, or this photograph shows uh, an image and during that Easter weekend in 1963. Reverend uh, Abernathy and Dr. King, they were both incarcerated that weekend, and that's when Dr. King wrote the letter from the Birmingham jail. I knew when I came here that segregation was wrong, and remember I had the advantage <clears throat> of having been a preacher for a while. I knew basic scriptures. Nobody knows all about God now, but God. You know, I guess when God really wants you to do something about something, he makes it so nothing is good about it. So I didn't have any inclination, I didn't have any uh, kind, kindred feelings toward those who thought that segregation might have been all right. I didn't think it was all right in any way. We're a coordinating body, the coordinating body, for all the local literacy programs, or what we call literacy providers, the organizations that teach individuals to read in our communities for all of Central Alabama. So we have two literacy helplines. One's a 1-800 number, 888-448-7323, and a local literacy number, 205-326-1925. If you live in Blount County, you do not have to, want to have to come all the way to Birmingham to learn to read. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Elizabeth. Yo tengo información de clases de inglés gratis. Por favor, llamarme en Birmingham a 326-1925 o en Alabama Central a 888-448-7323. Gracias. Copyright law was intended to give uh, artists and authors some rights over the creation of derivative works, in other words, expressions of the same ideas in different mediums, but still incorporating their individual ways of expressing their ideas. So to create a uh, radio show that duplicates some of the expression in someone's copyrighted television show could be a violation of the right to create derivative works. in the mess 
of mass media brainwashing. It was not just about civil rights, it was about jobs. It was about economic justice, not just social justice. I just fell in love with the whole magic of behind the scenes and just getting to act and ever since then I've just been in love with it. So that's what kept going. The most important thing about it I, I guess is just, it's just an opportunity to create. Uh, just, I mean, be expressive. Uh, I mean, you can do so much with it. You can, you know, say so many, so many things through movement. And I think that's the most important thing, I think. Dance is often suggested for gymnasts and uh, springboard divers. Uh, Greg Lugana studied dance, and uh, a number of other divers studied particularly ballet, because it works on the line of the leg and the feet. And so it uh, just seemed to be a natural progression. You're going to run into people who are only in it for themselves. You're going to run into politicians who are trying to block you. You're going to run into people who are just kind of playing games back and forth for whom politics is just sort of a game of gotcha and who's going to win. And you have to endure those people and you have to not give up and you have to fight through that. Uh, but the rewards of doing that are particularly great. Hi, I'm Prince Yelder, uh, music director for the New Hope Baptist Church. I serve as music and cultural arts uh, director for both locations in West End and in South Avondale. And I've been uh, in music ministry directing and playing uh, instruments for at least 25 years. Um, my choirs and music ministries have gone across the length and breadth of the country uh, in gospel music performances. And we do a number of performances here in the city for nonprofit organizations to help them further what it is that they do in their ministries. Um, keeping that in mind, we're going to be performing at the Alice Stevens Center on March 5th for the Empower Ministries Sing and Shout musical program. I'm sure it's going to be a wonderful experience. The New Hope Baptist Church Music and Cultural Arts Ministry has about 300 persons who either sing or dance or act as uh, those persons who are members of the drama ministry. 
The mass choir in and of itself has about 150 voices. They have a unique style of ministry, very high, strong, energetic singers and movement uh, persons, as well as they sing both traditional and contemporary gospel music. It's very energetic, very enjoyable. We'll be bringing about 70 to 80 of those voices down to the Sing and Shout uh, celebration on March 5th to join in with the 400 voices of the Mass Choir who will be under the direction of Dr. Milburn Price from Sanford University. It's going to be good. Sing and Shout will be Sunday, March 5th at 6 p.m. at the Alice Stevens Center. You can get tickets to the box office and through Empower at our website. That's www.mpowerministries.org. That's www, the letter M, the word power, the word ministries.org. Music soothes the savage beast. Music makes you feel relaxed. Music makes you realize that we just one part of a microcosm of this world. Music makes you realize that there's one other being besides yourself. So songs always bring you back to reality. And I hope and pray someone online, we all realize that gospel music is the answer. My friend was doing that, and then I saw, saw these things, and I, I was very moved. And, and that is, uh, I started learning, and I, I actually make it because I want to make it, and I want to uh, give these things as a present, present for my friends.
have a broad-based movement going to open his eyes to say there's yet more to change. So thank God for Rosa Montgomery Improvement Association and Martin Luther King and that bus because it demonstrated to the coming women's movement, the peace movement, the youth movement, uh, the movement to, uh, for people 18 to get the right to vote <laughs> movement uh, that came on. And I want to share it with you now and tell me what you think about it. St. Martin, your name will never be forgotten. St. Martin, your name will never be forgotten. of the universe bends toward justice and peace. And Martin has empowered us to use time to follow that art. Hope you enjoyed today's program and we do find a way to solve a lot of the problems that mankind is facing today but we always need to respect everyone and in every way